Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Azure Farms in Sherman County, Oregon has been certified organic for 18 years. The enterprise has all the sounds of a bustling online business with customers in 38 states, including Hawaii and Alaska. Thank you for calling Azure Standard. To leave a message for customer service, press 1 or remain on the line. To reach our other departments, press 2. To hear these options again, press pound. Until recently, county officials wanted to spray Azure's 2,000 acres with controversial herbicides. This would have destroyed the farm's ability to serve its organic customer base. Today we'll be talking with David Cross. He has quite a resume. He once ran for a seat in the British Parliament. He's been a guest presenter on QVC, and he's currently Director of Marketing for Azure. David, most counties have a Department of Economic Development, which is generally created to attract local jobs. Why did Sherman County want to effectively wipe out Azure with your nearly $6 million annual payroll? It almost sounds like there's got to be something going on behind the scenes. I don't think that Sherman County did want to wipe out Azure. I think that you're perhaps overstating the case a little there, Steve. But I can see where you're coming from. Azure had a few weeds on its organic farm. The methods that the county were proposing using was the spraying of some chemicals and perhaps the quarantine of the 2,000 acres, which would have involved the eradication of those weeds using uh, toxic herbicides. Um, I have heard rumors from people that, you know, there's something else at play here. That's possible, but I'm personally, you know, not going to speculate what, what that might be. I can't substantiate any rumors as to whether a large agrochemical company was behind this or anything. We're just kind of looking to deal with the facts here. Fair enough. I was wondering about the weeds growing on Azure Farms. Are they really noxious? or just assumed to be by people who haven't done their research? Both. <laughs> to the average layperson, one weed is bothersome. There are a few that are actually classed as B-class noxious weeds, and those are the things that the Weed Management Board is specifically interested in. But uh, certainly, you know, there's been um, people posting pictures of weeds that are not noxious weeds. We've even seen pictures posted of weeds in fields that aren't even Azure's fields. So there's clearly a public opinion in the area, largely, I think, from farms who do use uh, toxic herbicides to completely eradicate weeds on their property. And for an organic farmer, the idea of spraying noxious chemicals is quite repugnant to us. But I can also see the other side of the debate that for a farm who doesn't want any weeds, the presence of any weed in our property is going to be a very abhorrent idea to them. So I think, you know, the thing here is that it's about the two sides coming together. One, for us to make sure that our organic weed management protocols are working, and uh, secondarily for the weed board to work with us and not listen to the, you know, the hearsay from people that are not completely up to spec of what constitutes uh, a noxious weed versus any other uh, weed in the environment. One of the accusations I've seen online is that seeds from your weeds go airborne and are carried to neighboring fields. I believe we need to turn this issue around. Are nearby property owners doing anything to stop seeds from their genetically modified organisms or GMOs, crops in this case, from drifting onto your land, you know, out of consideration for your customers? Yeah, I think that's a good point to make. I mean, I have seen uh, that kind of comment come up online. There are actually, for example, there are no GMO wheat seeds that are actually approved in the United States today. Um, are you referring to a specific other kind of uh, GMO crop that you know is being grown? I guess I'm just talking from a general idea that there are a lot of GMO crops out there, and I just thought that since they seem to be almost dominant now, there must be some near you. But that's just talking from a general perspective. Do you know, Steve, I think that that kind of generalism is what's actually gone behind the debate to confuse and muddy some of the points. Certainly, there are GMO crops. There are certain types of GMO corn and stuff. That is not grown near to us as far as we're aware. But, um, I think that the bigger problem here is the drifting of herbicides, uh, toxic herbicides onto our property. And I also think that, you know, the agricultural practices that are dumping bunches of uh, certain types of fertilizers on these fields is actually having an effect on the groundwater. I'm glad things aren't as serious as some of the stories I've heard. 
I'd like to ask you a little more about the dangers of herbicides, such as Roundup. Some people are familiar with the danger, some completely unfamiliar. What's the downside of using these kinds of products? There's been a lot of studies done inside of Europe looking at the toxicity of Roundup. California recently, uh, in April this year, mentioned that it was a probable human carcinogen and they're now requiring a Measure 65 label to be put on it. So it requires a very small concentration of glyphosate in a system for it to start to become toxic. The specific uh, complaints that we'd received from the county this year were not uh, specifically looking at um, glyphosate, although that has been mentioned to us in the past by the county. They were looking at a couple of other herbicides. One of them is called Milestone. Now, the toxicity of Milestone is worse than glyphosate in Roundup. The first time I heard about your story was in an article written by Nathan Stelzer, a member of your founder's family, and it looked like May 22nd was the day the disaster might happen. I know there's been at least one write-in campaign involving a petition, maybe even a petition to Oregon's governor, but May 22nd came and went, and none of that happened. What kind of understanding did you reach with the county so that you were given more room to work? weed management protocol, which they are now looking into. They're working through their weed management expert, Rod Asher, who is in conjunction working with an expert from a local university to assess whether they think our weed management protocol is acceptable. But, you know, every day at the farm we are, we're farming, we're growing great quality organic non-GMO crops. We're also taking care of the weeds so that they do not go to seed. The specific Oregon uh, statute that is being used in this particular instance states that the weeds should be managed and not allowed to go to seed. That's something I wanted to ask you about. It seems to me there was a violation of the principle of original intent. The statute talks about controlling the weeds, not necessarily eradicating them. So maybe the county might be having trouble changing the wording without actually changing the wording, if you know what I mean. What do you think? The weed management expert, Rod Asher, by his own admission, says that he's not well trained in uh, organic weed control practices, which is why they brought in a third-party outside expert. Uh, Rod's expertise is more in the management of weeds through herbicides and such. And uh, so, you know, we're very hopeful that our plan will be first of all accepted, but we're not waiting around for them to accept it. We're every day working those fields. I don't know if uh, this would help you guys or not, but recently on the WaitToHearThis.com website, we carried a story about an herbicide that's licensed to use the Roundup name in Austria. Its active ingredient is vinegar. Would it be possible to have some of that imported into Oregon and take care of the weed control needs you have? No need to. We're already in discussion with a company about that. The vinegar is specifically used in our case for a Canada thistle, which has got quite a deep tap root and it's got a kind of rhizome uh, um, root structure, then certain applications of vinegar at the right time in the growing season can absolutely be a good thing, yeah. David, are there any other myths you'd like to bust about organic farming? As you've said, there's been a whole lot of misunderstanding. I'd like to give you one last chance to help people better understand what's going on before we close the interview. I would urge people to look at the real issue here for us, which is not about weeds. The real issue is the production and the distribution of high-quality organic food and the farming of organic food that does not destroy the environment and does not put dangerous pesticides and chemicals into our national food chain. David, I've enjoyed talking with you. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. David Cross is Marketing Director of Azure Farms. You can learn more about this story by visiting the farm's website, azurestandard.com. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. you hear this.com.